Tops is going public. Well, sort of. We're going to break down everything you need to know about this Tops transaction from Michael Eisner to Jason Mudrick, Mudrick Capital, the mechanisms on how this deal is going to happen and what it means to you as a collector. Stay tuned, you're not gonna wanna miss it. Hi everyone, I'm Cardi C and welcome to the channel. Here we explore ways to grow your sports card collection and potentially make some money along the way by gaining a deeper understanding of the hobby. So if you enjoy today's content, make sure to hit that thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to get an alert every time I release new content. But let's hop into today's video. On Tuesday, it was announced by Tops and Mudrick Capital that they would be taking Tops public at a $1.3 billion dollar valuation. It's a huge number for one of the most recognizable brands and companies in the hobby, but to understand it a little bit better, we have to get to know the players. And the first two players we have to meet are Michael Eisner and Jason Mudrick. Now, Michael Eisner is the chairman of the Tops Company Board. Uh, he used to be the CEO of Disney, so if the name sounds familiar, that's probably where you've heard it from. He established a private equity fund back in 2007 and purchased Tops to take the company private for $385 million with the assistance of Madison Dearborn Partners. So Michael Eisner has been at the forefront. He has been the chairman of the Tops board since 2007. One important thing to note on how the money works when the company was taken private back in 2007, um, it's very likely that Madison Dearborn Partners came in with money that was established through a close-ended fund. And when you have investors that are in an investment vehicle in a close-ended fund, the investment firm, the private equity firm, has a limited investment horizon. So at some point, they need to find another partner to come in and buy them out so that the investment firm can return the capital to their investors. That is significant because it plays into why Tops might be deciding to go public now versus a year or two from now. The other side of things, you have Jason Mudrick, who is the chairperson of Mudrick Capital. They have made a killing on these meme stocks, GameStop, AMC, uh, and they've been known to invest in distressed assets and sort of come in, bully their way into a, a management position, take over the company, install management that they believe can reset the company in a better direction. Um, but that that isn't the case with Tops. But what Tops does get with Mudrick Capital is a level of expertise about the capital markets in this concept of a SPAC transaction. Now, because there's so much information here to break down, I'm actually going to do a second episode on what a SPAC transaction is, what it means to Tops in this case the investors in the, the company now and the future investors, and then what it means to collectors. So keep an eye out for that video on Wednesday. But for today's purpose, all you need to know is that a SPAC stands for a Special Purpose Acquisition Company. So Mudrick Capital went out and established a public company. It's called the Mudrick Capital Acquisition Corporation II. The ticker symbol is MUDS, M-U-D-S. If you go on Yahoo or Google Finance, you can search the ticker and see what it's publicly trading for. So what MUDS is, is it's a blank check company um, where investors buy into this shell company essentially with the sole purpose and vision of going out and acquiring a private company to take that private company public. 
Um, and that's exactly what they're doing with Tops. They worked together. They have a $1.3 billion valuation on the company. Um, and by the third or fourth quarter of 2021, MUDS will have acquired Tops, and then the, this entire shell company will morph into just Tops as a public company. They'll change their ticker, um, and Tops will be a public company, and MUDS will be uh, no more, essentially. So MUDS is going to acquire Tops. Tops is effectively going to take over MUDS. MUDS will cease to exist. And Tops will continue to function as they always have, but now they'll be a public company. Michael Eisner is holding on to all the equity that he has in the Tops company, so he's not selling anything. Um, and he's retaining his seat as chairman of the board of directors. Some notable names on the board of directors include Jill Ellis. She's the coach of the U.S. women's soccer team. And then Mark Lazary, who is the co-owner of the Milwaukee Bucks. So on Tuesday, after the deal was announced, Michael Eisner and Jason Mudrick hit the press tour. They stopped at Yahoo Finance, CNBC. You saw articles coming out on the New York Times, uh, the Wall Street Journal. Wherever you get your news, you saw that Tops was being taken public. And in their public statements, there were a couple themes that emerged. The first was the embrace of digital, blockchain, and NFTs. That was number one. Number two was Topps's strong financial returns and the $1.3 billion valuation being based off of current operating returns and performance, not necessarily a valuation that's relying and dependent on this hockey stick growth. So that was number two. Number three was their hints and teasing at future M&A. So let's break down each of those three items. The first, digital innovation, NFT, uh, and blockchain. So Michael Eisner in his interview with Yahoo Finance had pointed to the release of Garbage Pail Kids and um, Kong, Godzilla versus Kong NFTs and said how well they're doing. Well, I consider myself to be a collector that's pretty in tuned mm -hmm. and those releases must have been uh, pretty stealthy because <laughs> I did not know about them at all. Uh, but the reason that they're so high on NFTs and blockchain is because the way that it's set up allows them to participate in secondary market transactions. So if you mint an NFT on certain sites, it allows collectors, creators, artists to receive a royalty payment every time that NFT is transacted. So on the surface of it, you might be thinking, wow, like there's there's so much upside here for tops in order to capture this NFT market and pe keep people engaged through NFTs. Um, why, why are they gonna want to invest into the analog, the physical card anymore? And the reason they'd want to strike a balance between the two is because your card collectors and the people that have an emotional connection with the analog, the, the physical card, are going to be the ones that go and purchase your NFTs. If you don't have a collector base that are interested in the NFTs, then it's not gonna matter if you get a piece of the pie if there's no pie left to eat. So that's that's the first thing. And it was and it was pretty overwhelming how often they had mentioned digital blockchain and NFTs in their public statements. This is a company that did $567 million in revenue in 2020. And the entire conversation was dominated around NFTs. Um, 
they did 6% of their total revenue on digital offerings last year. So take that for what it's worth. The second area they emphasized was the current valuation being based on the current financials of the company. Now, when I first heard this, I thought this was a direct shot at Collector's Universe because their valuation is based off of the company essentially 5xing over the next five years. Um, but when you take the SPAC marketplace into perspective, it's really more trying to calm an investor base down about how speculative this transaction actually is. You see a lot of companies try to circumvent the traditional IPO process and go the SPAC route because there's not as much scrutiny over the, the financials that are going into a SPAC transaction. Um, and a lot of times what you see to justify the valuation of a company and get the SPAC sponsor paid is an inflated valuation that is heavily based on future projections. So this is a way of Mudrick just getting out there in front of the general public and saying, yeah, like we can participate in the upside of digital and blockchain, uh, digital blockchain and NFTs. But like this is a company that has iconic brands. They've been around since 1938. They have an exclusive license with the MLB. Uh, we're not concerned about a valuation of $1.3 billion because we believe that the current infrastructure in place supports that transaction. Now, the third item that stuck out like a sore thumb during their public statements was Topps' eagerness to participate in mergers and acquisitions. At the end of the deal, they'll have about $575 million in cash to go out and acquire companies to help supercharge and fuel their growth. MUDS had released an investor presentation outlining the transaction and showing the conversations between Tops and Mudrick Capital Partners. And in there, they included a slide that had a list of potential acquisition companies. Let's take a look at what that list had. So there's a whole lot of different industries and sectors in here. You have Tops in the licensing platform. You have some horizontal integration going on or potential horizontal integration going on with Panini and Upper Deck. Um, you have some vertical integration going on with Fanatics, which is an online retailer of Tops products. Uh, there's also companies here that are super, super big, like Tops isn't going to go out and acquire the NBA, but there's obviously something, a transaction here that Tops management has contemplated. Same thing with EA Sports over here. That's a $40 billion publicly traded company. Uh, they're not going to go out and acquire EA, but I could foresee some type of transaction where Tops enters into a licensing deal to sell NFTs that can be integrated into EA Sports games. Um, also notable up here, Barstool Sports, recently valued as high as $450 million. I just said Tops is going to have $575 million in cash to burn at the end of this transaction. I don't know if buying Barstool Sports outright is going to be their best idea to fuel growth in sports cards and NFTs. Uh, but it was a big enough deal where it made its way onto the investor deck. Now we're going to go through this entire investor deck on our next episode, but this is just a little nugget of information I wanted to pass along. Gives them great insight into what Tops is thinking about the future of their company. So the question begs, why take Tops public now? And there's one simple answer. They're striking while the iron is hot. There have been so many headlines in mainstream media about these all-time record sales. You have Tom Brady out acknowledging the sale of his contenders. I know it's not a Tops card, um, but 
it is dominating the headlines in a COVID world. Post-COVID, who knows if sports cards are going to be able to capture the mainstream media attention that they have the last six months. Michael Eisner and Madison Dearborn Partners are in for $385 million. Uh, when you're talking hundreds of millions of dollars, a 3x return over 14 years is not bad, not bad at all. And as I had mentioned at the outset of the video, I think that Madison Dearborn has some money that was sort of sourced, fundraised through a close-ended fund that they're going to have to recoup in return to investors. So it's sort of forcing the hand of Michael Eisner into, all right, do I want to go acquire additional private money to come in? Or should we buy out Madison Dearborn, go public, and then leave ourselves the opportunity to have this bucket of cash here to go out and buy other companies to supercharge our growth for the future? But our conversation has not ended here. On Wednesday's episode, we're going to explore why they're going public through a SPAC transaction. We're going to investigate what has been released so far in terms of the narrative in the investor deck and the agreements that have been released to the public and then take a look at the financials that are behind them, or at least some financial information. And most importantly, we're going to talk about the pros and cons of tops going public to you as a collector. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Again, part two is releasing on Wednesday. Check back then, you're not gonna wanna miss it. In the meantime, if you have any questions, let me know either in the comments below, follow me on Instagram at Cardi C Sports Cards. You can always DM me there. Um, and that's it. It's a very, very exciting time in the hobby and I'm super, super excited to be spending it with you all. That's all I got for you guys today. I'm Cardi C and I will see you guys on Wednesday.